see what happens. We do have the last soul remaining represented from Europe. So let's go ahead and introduce them. Hailing from Russia, please welcome to the stage, Stan Udachi. <laughs> His opponent, looking to be a Royal Rotor in the Hearthstone Championship Tour, please welcome Samuel Tao. Semi-final number one, Stanudachi versus Samuel Tao. I played against a Chinese player, Lovely Chuk. I thought he would have been one of the worst matchups for me, but I chose the right decks against his. 4 0 for Stanadachi and our first player into the top four and going to the World Championships. And now we have a Taiwanese player in the top four. Actually, I haven't imagined I would reach the final four. Even before I came here, I was really afraid that I would just continuously get beaten 0-4 and get knocked out. I'm very confident in the decks I brought to this tournament, and I'm not worried about playing any opponent. My next opponent is Stan Yudachi. I would use the phrase on fire to describe all his matches. Even though it will be hard, I will do my best. Stan Yudachi versus Samuel Tsao! Ready, set, go! And we are ready to get into the first match of the day. The first match of three we've got throughout this day before we crown the champion of the Winter Championships. Cannot wait for this one. I'm very excited. Two very different stylistic players here coming to clash in the semi-final. Yeah, and it's really going to ma be a matter of who gets to dictate the pace here. It, it, you could have to role play as X-Hope and hold on to your hats if Stan Udachi's pace gets to dictate here because he plays lightning fast, whereas Samuel Sao has been the guy dragging things down, slowing the pace down as much as he can, as well as just stretching every single series, it seems like, out to a 4-3 or 4-2. So maybe the pace of this match, who gets sucked into the other one's rhythm, is going to have a lot to say. Yeah, as we get into the first game, of course, Stanudachi on the mage and Samuel Zhao going for his Shaman. And we've seen just an incredible play in general from both of these players. And Samuel Zhao, even though, you know, we talked about Stan's record a lot. He's currently 12-3 in this tournament yeah. versus Samuel Zhao, who's 15-12, mm -hmm. which is just crazy in terms of the amount of extra games he has played or had to play throughout this. But Samuel Zhao has never given up and always been able to fight back no matter what's been going on in the series. So, you know, that kind of tenacity is yeah, working out for him really well so far. Yeah, and straight away, the pace has been set. It passed to Stan, snap call, Arcane Blast, your troll, go. <laughs> and then immediate pause for Stan Udachi, even though playing the Blood Mage Thanos here was probably not a realistic consideration. Yeah, we'll see how this keeps up. And Stan doesn't have too much to think about this turn, though, because there is a lot of high value cards, but also high costing cards in his hand at the moment. None of the uh, the early cards you want you want as this Reno Mage to be able to deal with a potential aggressive start from Shaman. But Samuel Zhao is running the Jade list, so doesn't normally go too crazy early on, especially because pirates have been taken out of this now. Yeah, absolutely. And Stan Adachi's deck is the cycle and burn version of Reno Mage, the version that plays the closest in style to uh, classic Freeze Mage. So he will be wanting to hit those novice engineers and loot hoarders early on alongside the Arcane Intellects to really start digging and cycling those utility cards out of his deck, trying to hit the meat. He's hit the meat a bit too early here. This is a lot of his late game package, a lot of his win condition, but he doesn't have the cards to stall out the mid game just yet. Meaning if Samuel Sao can put together a big push in terms of mid game board aggression, he might be able to run down over here. Yeah, Stan's going to have to get some kind of AOE as a sort of a, you know, insurance policy towards this board, getting to the, the mid tiers of Jades and starting to stack up a little bit. But Samuel's out off to a pretty reasonable start. Even the thing from below in his hand there is going to start being reduced and make it much easier to get out on one big power turn as opposed to play on curve, which I've seen happen quite a lot in this tournament, actually. Just think of thing from below, just on four as a four mana card. Yeah, still pretty good. It is Totem and Thing from below is available this turn for Samuel Sauer if he wants to go down that route, but he's thinking about potential outs from his opponent 
there's been no play from Stanadachi since that arcane, uh, arcane Blast on turn one, meaning probably high value cards in the hand, meaning probably there is a chance of a big coin play here. Coin Emperor or a Drake coming down on the following turn. Samuel Sal just figuring out how he can front load as much power. So if there is a slow play here from Stan to try and get some action out of his slow hand, then Samuel Sal is able to punish it most effectively. Yeah, and he's going to go for the Emperor. Something we've seen again quite often this tournament is just a kind of, I'm playing Emperor when I can, regardless of what you're doing, because one, you you know, it's on my opponent to trade into the Emperor, and also you just get that instant value from the reduction. And there's a lot of high cost cards in his hand, as we said at the beginning of the game, where this reduction is going to have quite an impact going forward into the rest of this game. Second thing from below is a huge pickup as well. Doesn't necessarily need to be committed as soon as possible here. It's a fantastic reload card. One, If you feel like your board state is already oppressive enough, as this board from Samuel Sal may be, it's the perfect card to hold back and just immediately generate a huge board after a big flame strike, Kazakas potion, whatever it may be, comes down. Yeah, this flame tongue tongue though is absolutely huge for Samuel Zhao. Gets some great trades into the Emperor and also pushing just a hell of a lot of damage. That is down to 15, does have Reno available, but this is just so much power on the board. Even uh, you know going on Reno at this point doesn't really do much to stop this damage. Yep, play, playing the thing from below, make sure that Samuel Zhao is comfortably uh, representing lethal on board, so that's why it's hitting the board right now. Stan would have discounted cards like Flame Strike available to him if they were Emperor, but Flame Strike no impact on this board. It would have to be Flame Strike plus another discounted option with Arcane Blast gone. That reduces that limit as well. So Samuel Sal, well within his rights to just push here, demand a Reno from Stan, but Stan is going to hold back. He's going to go Firelands Portal. So Stan's just saying you don't have Jade Lightning he's at this point. He's, he's saying my highest chance of winning this game is that you don't have Jade Lightning. He's saying if I play Reno here and let you push all this damage back past it, I'll probably just die to Jade Lightning eventually anyway. So let's just shut my eyes and pretend that card doesn't exist. Nightblade, not the big hit he was looking for. He's far enough behind that he would have loved a Doom Guard, an Earth Elemental, one of the real Portal high rolls but he's just going to slowly try and pick apart this board, hope to squeeze just that extra bit of value out of Reno, and it's going to pay off for him here. Yeah, one of the benefits he has going into next turn is that he can Reno and Fireball because of the way the mana lines up with the Emperor ticks. So, oh, no, he can't. No, he can't. He can, he can Reno and Doomsayer. It's looking at the wrong mana. That would have been a very cheap Fireball. Still early. Still early. I can, I can have that one. I <laughs> okay, all right, look, look, real real talk here. We as casters cannot say, hey, it's late, that's why I'm making mistakes, and then the very next day come back, like, oh, it's still I early. Like, I, when, I did when and do I will. we cast well in that case? Never. Come on. Okay, so Reno is available, though, <laughs> moving on from, from me getting destroyed here. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's the play I, you know, I was pretty sure was correct in the first place, <laughs> which is the Reno and the Doomsday. It's still so much power available for Samuel Zhao, though. This is uh, still kind of huge, being able to kill off that Doomsday without much effort at all. And there's his second Flame Tongue. Yeah, it does mean playing the Doomsayer in combination with the Reno is actually kind of cute. It's a turn that I've seen happen on, on more than one occasion. It, it essentially means you heal 237 on any given turn. So it kind of squeezes extra value out of the Reno in that sense, because the Doomsayer does need to be dealt with if you're playing it into a po an opponent who's bored. You've not yet been able to answer. So I do like this combination. It's something that happens fairly commonly in these Reno decks. But Sam Sal just has so much gas to keep going here. Yeah, he can pretty much do what he wants now. He's probably fairly aware that there isn't any kind of strong AoE um, available for Stan as he would have, you know, even stalls. He, he would have used it by now to stop this kind of onslaught of damage. And there's still four cards in Stan's hand that have been discounted as well. So Samuel Zhao's probably got a reasonable handle on those, being the finishers, being the late game cards for Stan here. And the damage is just going to come straight back in. 21 health here for Stan, and there is 11, 18, 19 being shown on board already, plus any flame tongue trickery that Sam Sal can create. So that Blizzard is a very, very timely draw. But Stan knows this board is quickly getting to a point where he's probably not going to get a grip on it. Without the Flame Strike to follow up this Blizzard immediately, it's going to be very, very tricky for him to get a board clear here. So that is why you're seeing this kind of Freeze Mage style strategy come out now. I talked about this yesterday. 
using spot removal to try and squeeze slightly more value out of your freeze effects by making them come a turn later. Stan here, I think what this signifies, Stan has given up on actually gaining board control back here. He's just trying to stretch the game out as long as he can so he can find his ice block, find his freeze mage style win conditions. Yeah, and we've seen this style of play from him multiple times throughout this tournament. You know, he's, he's always, you know, holding out as long as possible for the big AOE turns or the big, uh, you know, swing turns, basically. But this might just be too much for him at this point. Samo Zhao has got plenty of uh, juice in the tank in terms of his hand. The Hex can just be used as almost like tempo at this point with the Maelstrom if he really wanted to continue to push for maximum damage here. I trade the Flame Tongue. Interesting. He has to create some board space somehow, so choosing the uh, Flame Tongue as the card to go down here. Comfortable lethal setup threatened, but now Stanudachi's hitting the cycle that he needs. Way too late, and now after finding that one greedy turn to not Blizzard, this time he is forced to. He has stretched out that one extra turn. 11 health is enough to play with as long as you're locking out the board each turn. So we'll see if Stan has enough time here. It's looking rough. But if anyone can find a way, it's going to be Stanadachi. Yeah, and let's remember, everyone, that Reno has been played. Uh, you know, that card is not coming out to play again. Uh, Bran into Kazakus, or even just a Kazakus draw in general, could really help with creating a potential additional board clear or some armor as well to make that health total a little bit safer. But in general, the, the Jay Chaman uh, list is actually just very linear. You know exactly what your opponent's trying to do, uh, and you can plan around it pretty perfectly. And as you, you know, alluded to earlier, you can play a much more freeze style matchup mm -hmm. versus this deck because it's pretty much all minion damage outside of the Jade Lightnings. Look at look at the priorities here from Sam Sal. There is a couple of times there's been much more powerful minions in terms of stats on the board and he's chose not to hex them. As soon as the Acolyte came down, Sam Sal's like, okay, I'm denying the card draw. That's what this hex is for. Trying to make sure that Stein can't get through his deck sufficiently to set up a win condition. I think that's really smart, actually. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, he He's been so far ahead throughout the whole game. He must have a read on the fact that Shan doesn't have the tools he wants or needs to actually wrestle this one back. G Double Jade G Lightning is simply a lot of damage at this point with the minions on board and Shan not being able to put up a good enough defense. Samuel Zhao is going to get off to a fairly quick, at least for him, game one win over Stan Rudachi. And he actually did play that one game fairly quickly. Maybe not as fast as Stan was, but certainly seems to be a little bit of a speed up from what we've seen from him so far. But remember, Stan Udachi, the one remaining European representative. He's played fantastic Hearthstone during this whole tournament. Sam Sao, a little bit more of an up and down road to get here, but he is fighting for the pride of his region as well, as well as for huge increments in prize money. And of course, the prestige now for all of these World Championship qualified players to crown themselves as the first ever global champion in a seasonal Hearthstone event. Yeah, absolutely huge for both players. And we've talked a lot about Shano Dachi's experience within the scene in tournaments in general. But Samuel Zhao is the newcomer, so we can find out a little bit more about him. From Taiwan, the newest player to the competitive scene in HCT, Samuel Zhao. This is his first trip to the Hearthstone Championship Tour. I couldn't have imagined that I would still be here. Before the tournament, I was really afraid everyone was going to beat me 4-0. He felt like the underdog the entire way. The group of doom! <laughs> I was in group D, the group of doom. I didn't even think I was going to make it out of the group stage. That's it, Samuel Sal, game number seven. Taking out one of the powerhouses. <laughs> and now I'm in the top four, but getting here wasn't so smooth. That is the most stressed I think we've seen Samuel Sal. So intense. Yeah. Samuel Sal, another hard fought long series. I lost the match, and so many of my matches went all the way to the seventh game. He does not want to go home. Samuel Zhao has been a very impressive player. Upsetting many players who are much better known than him. Did, did so. But I'm still here. I survived. Hopefully, I can win the whole tournament. Samuel Zhao is going to the semifinals. Before this tournament, I was an unknown. But now that I've qualified for the World Championships, I think people will recognize me. He was an amateur player. Now he's the one going to the World Championship. I hope I can keep a low profile and stay humble. Being famous comes with a lot of pressure. Now we have a Taiwanese player in the top four. My dream is go to the World Championship. And now the dream came true. 
playing in the championships here in the Bahamas is definitely a way to get people to recognize you and your skills going forward as a Hearthstone player. And I have no doubt that Samuel Zao's life is about to uh, get a little bit more busy going forward. Yeah, and I love as he's progressed through this tournament, uh, his his personality started to shine a little bit more. Early on, his uh, his interviews were a little bit vanilla. I mean, who can blame him? He's probably been exhausted after every series he's played the length <laughs> they've gone. But once the pressure was out, the, the happiness has started to come through. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more from him later in the year, potentially a lot more from him over the course of today as well. Yeah, and we are moving into game two here. Samuel Zhao is 1-0 up versus Stairudashi. And he's going to go for the Priest versus Stan's... Uh, it's just on Shaman, and it's actually the aggro list, something we've not seen too often, being that Shaman's actually dropped quite a lot in what we would expect in terms of representation in this tournament. Yeah, aggro Shaman was the uh, the build of the deck that many people thought was going to be hit much, much harder by the loss of the, the small-time Buccaneer getting nerfed, Spirit Claws as well. Everyone kind of theorized mid-range Shaman will, will persevere. They don't have to play Spirit Claws. The pirate package was just in there as a luxury. We can go back to Tunnel Trog and Totem Golem. No problem, that's just fine, but people did wonder how the aggro shaman was going to function. And it turns out the answer to that is Hammer of Twilight, the card yeah. that came in. Always kind of objectively a strong card, but wasn't able to find room amongst all the other powerful weapons that amongst Shaman had available. all those Spirit Claws. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> spirit Claws and J Claws already took up so many turns of weapon charge for the deck that there just wasn't room for those Hammer of Twilights. Yeah, and looking at the opening hands here, Shagadachi has a, not the fastest opening at all, but has definitely got some more uh, early to mid game cards to really bust out onto the board. Whereas Samuel Zhao, without this Nether Spite, would have had a, an empty few turns, does have the Shadow Word Pain to be able to deal with uh, one of the early minions from Stan. But other than that, just you know, turn five plays. Turn five is a very late in the game when you're playing against an aggro deck. And this matchup has changed a lot since the nerfs and since the new build of aggro shaman. Previously, your goal as the shaman player was to go first, first and foremost. You, you, you got lucky if you were going first. And then if you went one drop into weapon or one drop into flame tongue totem, that got you the board early and you could usually just snowball and crush priest. Conversely, priest were trying to go first, dropping a 2-3 uh, a or a 1-3 and then leveraging from the same position. Now, Stanodachi's pirate package is gone from the deck primarily, so his ability to do that is greatly reduced. But he hasn't had any problems with his shaman so far, as you just saw on the screen. 3-0 record, clean through so far. Yeah, can't really argue with the results so far. Stando getting the J Claws down, choosing not to attack, as obviously the Priest can just heal up that kind of damage anyway. It would take up, or it would have the potential to take up the mana for the turn, so it could potentially interrupt the curve from Samu Zhao. But, you know, you only have two charges on that weapon. You kind of want to guarantee kills and, and some stronger effects there. So Stando just taking it slow here. And Samu Zhao's managed to actually just grip the board with these minions and you know, the Women's Agent as well kind of coming out slightly off curve is actually just a great minion for stalling out Shaman as the two attack can actually help just kill off the totems, worst case scenario. A little bit of theatrics here, I think, from Samuel Sao. Played his, uh, his Wormrest Agent, then moused over a few cards that were unplayable and then rolled his eyes upwards as if he was thinking about something. Maybe just trying to bluff potential one mana plays, particularly uh, Twilight Whelp number two. That would be a card that would be in your hand right now. You'd be able to play, but you might want to hold on to activate dragons later. So Stanadachi though, this whole tournament has not seemed particularly interested in looking away from the screen at any point. That would interrupt his processing power and cause him to take more than three seconds on any given turn of Hearthstone. Yeah, it's uh, definitely interesting watching how these players have developed through the experience of playing on stage as well and being sat that close to each other in these very, very uh, high level matches going on. He did go for the coin into the Feral Spirits. He's gonna be heavily overloaded next turn. Only having two mana to play with, it's really locks out that, that turn outside of really just hero power. Yeah, this is a uh, classic, you know, aggro 101, trusting your deck here. When you've drawn this badly, you've drawn so many of your expensive cards early on, you trust that your deck will give you a play next turn even if you've locked out the mana to, to play anything in your hand, because so many of his early aggressive cards are still there. So Stan, you know, not having things to play right now is not his biggest issue. It's how early he's lost this board to yeah. the Dragon Priest, and it's so hard to recover from this position. I've seen this matchup go long, and both Hammer of Twilights get drawn. That's massive value for the Aggro Shaman player. Dragon Priest runs a bit dry, but the key component of that is Dragon Priest runs a bit dry later on. 
Sam Sao is not going to do that with operative, operative Azure Drake as his hand right now. Well, I mentioned earlier, you know, Sam Sao's hands, you know, looked a bit a bit rough because you, he has to get to those five drops. Yeah. He had like two five drops in his hand at the, at the time. And now he's got there and still got the board while Stan is not developing anything here outside of his hero power. So Sam Sao is about to kind of go off at this point and just, he can just chain drop the uh, the operatives if he really wants. It looks like the play, why not? You don't need a crypt to, to kill off a totem and a lot of great options there. Hmm. Just take Lava Burst, kill him. This game's nearly over. Yeah, I was at first I was like, well, Aya just feels like a natural. Ah, is just a great card. Do you, tr do you play it? Maelstrom could be combined with Holy Nova a little bit later to do the three damage that, you know, is kind of difficult to do and uh, pretty much clears a lot of the Shaman minions off. But yeah, you can just lava burst him in the face as well. Seems I don't, pretty good. I don't think it's Aya. Even though kind of objectively the strongest card, yeah. that's the, yeah, yeah. the one card that you just have covered with your hand right now. You have three chunky mid-game idiots that you can just drop on the board at any given point. You don't need another one. So for me, lava burst or maelstrom was the choice there. My initial thought was lava burst. Sam Sal seems to agree. He's going to try and end this game as quickly as possible. And Dragon Priest is suddenly going to role play as the aggro deck here. Yeah, and it really can as well. It's very easily uh, doing this because even though the Flame Weave Faceless is now on the board and there's potential of it trading into the operative, Sam could just play another operative this turn. And he's like, well, you trade into one. There's another one. I gain another card and then can continue to pressure. He can even use the Power Word Shield um, and, and defend one of the operatives from a direct trade from the Flame Weave as well. Lead out with a shield here. Yeah, Corruptor on the 3-3 looks promising to me, but he's going to get the sequencing right. And Rag is Samuel Sal's uh, little tech choice twist on Dragon Priest. Dragon Priest usually has uh, two or three, maybe four spots that are up for debate between players and you know, stylistic preferences and players' own testing comes into account. Samuel Sal is going Rag, and Samuel Sal is going face against this 7-7. I love this call. Lava Burst, Ragnaros, Holy Nova in hand. Weird to consider Holy Nova as burst damage alongside those Sweet two. Sweet two damage bursts. Every little helps in this situation. Uh, except from an angry chicken. It's probably not going to be helping Stan in this situation at all. Probably would have liked to taunt at this point. Can't presume there's a burst damage spell that uh, Samuel Zhao has in hand, but is a much higher possibility than it would be in the mid-range deck as well. That Holy Nova, although it was actually good on the board, that Holy Nova was nothing to do with clearing the minions. That's just a one-two punch for Sam Sal, which locks this game up 100%. Shaman cannot heal out of this in its aggro form. No Jinyu Water Speaker in the deck. So all he had to do was cast Holy Nova that turn. He wasn't going to die. Lava Burst ends the game. Quick 2-0 from Samuel Sal. That's not something we've said too often this nope, week, Raven. Not at all. We have found a way to make Samuel Zhao's matches go quicker, it seems, and it's to put him against Stanu uh, This is kind of huge for him. You know, we've talked a lot. Stanu is extremely well known. Samuel Zhao, the newcomer, and he is just continuing to make a name for himself. He He's already got the spot at the World Championships. Yeah. He won that yesterday. He's in the top four, but he is continuing to prove that he's a very, very good Hearthstone player with a lot of potential in the future. Samuel Sal, stop. Europe is already dead. Come on. This is our last hope. We gave it, you know, we gave it so much confidence on day one. And, you know, hats off to America's, you know, fair play. America's has ended up dominating this in terms of uh, championship spots. Stanadachi, our last big hope for Europe. But, of course, he's in it for himself here. Huge prize money, huge prestige at stake. Yeah, and Stan is one of the most hardworking players around. We can find out what he thinks about all his hard work paying off at this point. In my last match, I was playing against the Chinese player Lovely Chuk. I thought he would be one of my worst matchups, but I guess my deck matchups against his correctly. Suddenly it looks like he may be the favorite in this one. This is a lot of damage that's going to come next turn. In the upcoming match, I think my lineup against Samuel Sao is strong. Some of my decks directly counteract his decks. He's got a lot of practice playing these crazy decks, making all these tact choices. I am very confident in the decks I brought to this tournament, and I'm not afraid to play anybody. A four damage spell here. Picks soul up the soul fire. fire. What dominating fashion from Stanudachi. In the past, there were many situations where I was close to winning, but it didn't happen. At DreamHack, I was winning and went to the playoffs and lost. 
It's great that something good is finally happening for me. Stanadachi going to the World Championships. Finally, the breakout performance that this guy needed. I've been trying to get to BlizzCon for three years, and now all my hard work is paying off. There are prizes and better things ahead, but none of that is as important as getting to the World Championships. the hard work paying off indeed he has already booked his spot in the world championships but this is the first time in this whole tournament that anyone has managed to put him down 0-2 in a series yeah series of firsts could be coming up here for Stano Dutchie. there's number one first time he's 0-2 down if he loses one more game that will be the first time he's faced an elimination game in this entire tournament not even facing a game to be knocked down to losers in the uh, group stage of this double elimination also to take it one step further if he lose if Sam Rizal takes one more game off him Sam Rizal would have given him as many losses as the rest of his competitors <laughs> that he's played at the start of this match. He yep. was 12-3, and now Sam Rizal's handed him two losses, one after the other. So one more to match every other player who's faced in this tournament. We are going into it right now. Sam Rizal on the mixed package rogue. Uh, we still messing with names. I guess Menagerie sounds a little bit better, but uh, <laughs> I, I will stop making up deck names, guys. Don't worry, that's the first and last time you'll hear that. Variety um, bucket rogue. Yeah. <laughs> You always have to show off, just beat me already. <laughs> I already admitted it was bad. You have to instantly name a better version. Menagerie Rogue. It's on the graphics. Uh, versus Steyer actually on his mage again. And this this Rogue is generally just, a, like you said, a mixed bag of tricks, right? There's so much it can do and so many ways it can actually get ahead in any game. It's going to be very interesting to see how both players navigate these decks. Yeah, let's, let's actually break the deck down in case our expert analysis on the deck I has mean, not been enough I mean, you just it by the name. <laughs> this has the Finger package, as you can see. It also has that Stealth package that's been in the more aggressive builds of Rogue, looking to buff up the, the Stealth minions. The Pirate package, trying to summon patches, is there also. And then because of coming some of the natural byproducts that come from that. You have Murlocs, you have a Beast because Stranglethorn Tiger has stealth and you're looking to buff that. You're then shoving Curator in there as your end game as well to try and send uh, work as some card draw. And Sam Sao, no great surprise, keeping Finger in his opening hand on the coin. Coin Finger on turn four wins a lot of games of Hearthstone, Raven. Yep, to the extent that Stan might already be considering a plan that if he has Kazakus early enough, you actually just snap go for the Polymorph Potion yeah. to be able to just deal with Finger stealth or not, as long as you can make sure Finger's uh, the only minion on the board that following turn. A little bit of an awkward spot now against this uh, Acolyte of Pain. He can play uh, War Leader to contest it, but War Leader is great for his post Finger turn, the turn where you are first attacking with Finger. Uh, SI7, same kind of thing, contests it nicely, but there's battle cry value that you're missing out on. But the last thing you want to do is give Stan uh much akin Reno Mage deck to Freeze Mage chance to just sit back, ping your Acolyte, fill up your hand, get those big burn damage combos together. Yeah, and I do like the SI7 agent over the wall leader for the reasons you listed. It's just so powerful to combine it with the Finger attack. It's absolutely crazy. So many games are actually just won on the spot off the back of a powerful Finger turn. That seems to look good to me. What to do? I can't remember who first tweeted this. I think it was Jambre, UK player, but uh, sorry if I've got that wrong. But he pointed out that Finger is essentially a five-mana Call of the Wild. If you look at the effects of the likely minions that come out, that is a crazy nope. level of power. Min minion doesn't have taunt. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, very, very similar indeed. Very powerful card that people have very recently got into you know, pretty much dropping in every single archetype they can think of at this point. Shinaridashi gets the additional card draw and keeps the Acolyte alive while sticking with the SI7 agent as well. But here's the turn we knew was coming pretty much since the start of the game. It's going to be the coin finger, and it's all on Stan now to decide what he wants to do with this. He could Frostbolt his own Acolyte at this point. That is a legal play, um, which I you mean, are not just I, suggesting to be no, ridiculous. No, I'm being, I'm, yeah, 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 I, I have an element of that might be a, something that Stan really needs to consider. I've seen this uh, happen a few times where you can kill off a low value minion because at the moment, Stan just doesn't have much else to do. He can Frost Nova to delay a turn, but Finger's going to stay stealthed. 
Yeah, yeah that's that, permanent stealth attacks. That Frost Nova also becomes somewhat valuable if the Finger does end up activating, but he is going to go ahead and do it here. He's trying to just delay this for one more turn because if it lines up against his seven mana turn, he has the answer. If it comes out against him next turn when he's going into six, then he can't cast that Flame Strike to be able to deal with the majority of the board. Yeah, and this also means that it, that it just opens up the scenario where he can actually just ping his own Acolyte next turn as opposed yep. to using the Frost Bolt this turn, which means he can effectively get rid of it, get full value from Acolyte whilst denying the Finger as well. So, you know, much better than just Frost Bolt, but it's definitely something to consider in terms of not giving your opponent any minions to trade into and therefore not proccing the Finger effect. Dr. Finger now. He's just graduated. He graduated from the same school as Dot Pwn. Yeah, potentially, yeah. Okay. Dagger coming down, taking care of the Acolyte here. But Sammy Sal just thinking, hmm, this Acolyte is going to draw a card here either way. Do I just want to go face and then potentially sacrifice my 2-1? Because, you know, Standard actually has to trade this minion off the board to prevent Finger from going into it. But the fact that 2-1 is in play means you probably want to protect that thing and just take care of the Acolyte on your terms. Yeah, just seek out a little bit more damage. Plenty of mana to just replay the dagger, or he can, uh, he can actually choose to buff Indra if he really wants, and this seems like the solid play. I'm only going into turn six, which means you are not too afraid of the flame strike clearing all the board except for Finger at this point. But Stein can actually set this up now if he really wants with the Blizzard into the flame strike to almost guarantee a clear. But now we're going to see the wall lead to get played. Samu Zao could keep this Finger alive for a long time at this point. Yeah, there is a very elaborate dance happening with this Finger right now. Stanodachi is trying to engineer situations where he can deny the Murloc value, but Samuel Sao keeps having the answers. He's got the clean flame strike lead. Uh, Clean flame strike read, I should say, sorry, on Stanudachi's hand. He's trying to beat that card, but time after time, Stan just says, I'm going to set it up again. You're not dealing any damage to me. You're not making progress. I can go on with this waltz all day long. Yeah, and this is one of the problems. I mean, the, the way the deck's built from Samuel Zhao means that cards like Curator can actually continue to get value into the late game. But when you kind of set on a plan of Finger getting the work done, and then it gets dealt with without getting any damage in, it, you can actually potentially run out of steam here. Does he attack? Is his read that clean? If he has the soul read on the flame strike, this is for free damage because this board will get nuked anyway. Ooh. He does not. Yeah, I would actually feel like Stan's put so much effort into continual damage on the Finger that I would just want four damage at this point. You've skipped so many turns. Mm -hmm. But it is a tough call because if the clear isn't there and Finger gets that attack in, you are in business at that point. And it's not that linear either because if you attack, you can leave yourself in a world where Stanudachi doesn't have to flame strike. He can Frostbolt or Forgotten Torch the Finger and then do something else with his turn. So Samuel Sal may even still have had the hard read, but just said, you know what? I will trade minus four damage for flame strike in this position. Yeah. Right, let's see. Stan's signature Emperor. I feel like uh, it's pretty much his card at the moment. He, he loves that one, just reducing all the cost down in the hand and then being able to do absolutely ridiculous things going forward. Already piecing together quite a lot of damage uh, with a one mana Frostbolt, Ice Lance, and Torch. Is it not? Uh, not enough mana, no. Doesn't have enough mana to fit it all in. Leroy, Shadow Step Leroy is 12, plus the Cold Blood is 16, but not enough additional mana after that to fit in any more damage. So he's just short and reacting to it as well, visibly reacting to it. Stanodach eats still, not, just, just does not care. Just eyes on the game at all times. He may as well be at home at this point. Yeah. You know, just in his own room, just play, playing away, focused on the game, whereas Samuel Zhao has done a, a, the, an odd glance over just in case. But Stan's not really giving anything away at this point. It's an awkward combination of cards to try and fit in because it's not even like stalling one more turn gives you any more freedom on your 10 mana turn to fit this damage in. You do if you want to go for the lethal push here. You have to ration this out and actually commit damage now, potentially losing a lot of damage, getting sunk into a Reno if it's in hand from Stan Odachi. <laughs> And Samurai's house just told Stan, 
exactly what he's got in his hands. Yes. Because there is no way, if you are planning for the late game, that that trade would not go into the Emperor at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, it's too much loss of value as a second tick on the Emperor is absolutely huge. Combined with the fact that the Swashburger can, can just be pinged off. Like, it's not like, oh, well, he'll trade the Emperor into it for me. It's like, no, he won't. It'll just die and the Emperor will live again. So it's all on Stan now to decide how he's going to try and survive what he is expecting to be probably a large amount of burst damage. And this might have to be a courier turn. See if you can pull anything too crazy there. Arcane oh. Intellect is two for the shots at Ice Block, though. He has 14 cards left. 14 cards left, two shots to hit it. That gives him a one in seven. Going He's Korea. saying that Courier gives him more outs. There are other things that aren't wow. ice block that could have okay. got him there. But he finds the block anyway. That is huge. There were cards, you know, like heal cards as yes, well exactly. that he could draw. So right. that's why he went for the Courier. There's multiple cards from the three classes that would keep him up. Ice block just being the exact one he was going to try and dig for anyway. And now Samuel Zhao has to think about the, you know, two ice blocks available for Stan. We talk a lot about this deck being played like Freeze Mage. Oh boy. And he is just going to play two ice blocks instead. This is brilliant too from Stan Udachi because he just has a clean lethal setup as well now the next turn. Just not even interested in protecting this block. He had a one mana Frostbolt in hand that he could have used to try and protect the block, take some of this damage off the board. He could have traded with his minions to do the same thing. He said, no, Ice Block is up. I just have potentially lethal damage if you don't trade into my board next turn. Even then, I still have more outs from my deck. Arcane Intellect can hit Reno or Ice Block again. He feels now suddenly that one Cabal Courier drop has put him in full control of this game. Absolutely crazy. Such a powerful card, and obviously, you know, the Ice Block being probably, well, yeah, the, the best outcome uh, from that card to guarantee he just will not die. And it's kind of burst damage now. Stan finally, you know, the, the slower cards he started the game with finally paying off for him here. Now Samuel Zhao's actually just trading just away. Trading. He's just like, okay, I need everything gone here because now I'm afraid when you can just pull an Ice Block out of actually nowhere at this point. It's just game. Antonidas in hand just ends this over the time the ice block is protected. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. That makes life simpler as well. Six from the fireball, three from the frostbolt is nine. 13 from the ice lance, 16 from the forgotten torch, and a good old pingaroo. Yeah, ping in the face to finish. What a game. Insane. All Absolutely off the insane. back of the courier choice. Could have gone for the arcane intellect to try and dig for the ice block. Courier though, Stan identifying that the Courier actually just gives me more potential options. You effectively kind of draw three cards and get to pick one. And from multiple classes, such as Priest, for example, there are heal cards that were available. And Stan finally puts a point on the board versus Samuel Zhao. Yeah, more so than that, he actually put a 2-2 on board that helped him to threaten lethal the next turn as well. It created another problem for Samuel Sao. So he wasn't purely just thinking about setting up for a defensive play to survive that turn. He was also thinking about which method to try that put him in a position to win the next turn. Yeah, and we can check out pretty much the turning point in that game. And it was the uh, it was the just the courier choice. It was right. absolutely huge. Huge heads up play because, you know, if Stan didn't draw, if he played intellect and didn't draw the actual ice block, it's just game at that point. He had one choice and he had to go for it and it paid off in the end. We can see the position he was in. We can see that Samuel was out and, and snatched. Stan could tell that he'd set up for a huge lethal burst, ignoring the Emperor. Now the option between Arcane Intellect and Courier was the choice. Yeah, and he chooses to go Cabal Courier, and there's so many things, you know, Flash Heal, Greater Healing Potion, Ice Barrier, um, even other mage secrets like um, Spellbender and Counterspell would have chance to disrupt certain things like Eviscerate and Shadow Step. So, so many choices to to find from and also just that extra 2-2 on the board created so many issues yeah. in terms of Samuel Sal trying to find a way to prevent lethal himself and you can see so close but no cigar for Samuel Sal in that spot and Reno Mage hasn't been a deck that's performed well in this tournament but Stan Udachi is the guy that has been having success with it so far and there's something different he's doing is there another edge to his play that's meaning he's finding success also a dramatically different build with the cycle heavy version from some of the other players who've brought a more value based or anti aggro deck. Yeah, I think uh, Cabal Courier is the, uh, the, ah, the main reason ah, okay. for this. <laughs> nice. Yeah, the inclusion of that card and, you know, that making a huge impact in that last game means we are at 2 1 to Samuel Zhao so far now. 
Sam going with the Rogue again. Stan moving on to another Reno deck of his, which is the Warlock. One he has a lot of history in, in terms of making many, many builds for this deck. Yeah, absolutely. One of his uh, favorite decks to mess around with. And he said that, you know, the Reno decks are nice because even though he's been forced to bring on meta decks for this tournament because he couldn't find a more creative strategy that he felt gave him a strong chance against the range of the field, he still likes Reno decks because there's always room to experiment. There's always room to just push in a couple of extra cards that are a little bit uh, break from the norm. But we saw yesterday Bludge Mage Thanos actually yes. uh, combined with Hellfire to clear a Rogue board, which is actually, you know, four damage AoE. Pretty good versus Rogue from my experience in this game. Now, though, Samuzal started off with a Swashburglar straight into a Doom Guard. And Swashburglar has that ability to just change the calculations of what is possible. An additional five damage straight from hand is potentially very huge as it's not uncommon for a rogue to be able to just use up his hand. So then the, the negative drawback of discarding two won't be as impactful. This backstab SI though is savage. Gaining tempo while killing a Doomsayer is often backbreaking for the control deck that's tried to slow yeah, you down. If you just have to go into it and you sink a removal spell that doesn't increase, increase your board presence, that's still in some senses a win for the control deck that's played it. But when you gain tempo with a card like SI7, really hard to recover from, from this kind of position. He's going to go straight through to the Twilight Drake to try and contest board here. Yeah, definitely needs something to start battling away. And I believe as well that there is no um, there is no sap in the list. Nope. So is it one of those tempo rogue lists where, it, well, it is a tempo list, but you can actually just sap this kind of play away and then continue to build upon to the board stand, knowing that this Twilight Drake is going to stick and more than likely get some work done here. Yeah, when you've got room for pirates and murlocs and beasts and the curator and Shaku and Edwin and silent knights and stealth buff cards in your rogue deck, you ain't got no room for saps. It's a shame. Mm. Saps are good cards. It really is. So seven agent number two, he's, his tempo hand here has been so strong in the opening turns as Sam Sao, and he's actually going to continue to just consolidate board here, which I have no issue with at all. Plenty of, uh, you know, decent value in his hand. It's the combination of Curator and Doom Guard don't play together particularly nicely. Not really. You don't want to discard the Doom Guard, and even if you wait and play the Curator, he's going to fill your upper hand back up anyway, so you're then going to have to play those cards before Doom Guard comes down. But still, if Doom Guard is potentially game ending in the spot it can be played, we might just see Sam Sao just go for it here. Yeah, not the most mind-boggling potion from Stan there. It's just gain seven armor, freeze two minions. Definitely helpful, but nothing that's going to break a, you know, you know the back of this game to a large extent, like a huge AoE would resummon, for example. It's the normal style of combinations. The addition of the Swashburglar is just creating more and more value. One one for one that draws a card. Two two for two that draws a card. And a one mana two three to end this turn. <laughs> Seems solid, although the, does he need the mm, does he need to redagger this turn? The dagger is a clean trade into the three three, losing a, a much weaker minion than he would. So, although he could have had a one mana two three, the old uh, combi chow coming down onto the board, it's much much more more tempo, more initiative, and just preserving a quality minion here to pass it up and just take the dagger. Nice clear here from Stan, just getting away from that slight. Nothing too big on the board, but enough to cause some problems when cards like Shadow Step, you know, Cold Bloods are, you know, in the deck. Even a small attack minions can actually get some damage done. And uh, Stan's hand is looking a bit, uh, you know, a bit random at the moment. There's no cohesion in terms of what he has available to him. He does have Siphon Soul for anything big that's going to come out, and maybe even later on can just Dirty Rat into Siphon Soul. Yeah, this is always going to happen to you in a, in a percentage of games when you put this bigger mishmash of things into your deck. It's something that we see Dragon Priest struggle with sometimes when they play too many tech cards. It's just the combos don't line up properly. It's uh, something that you will run into when you're playing three or four different combinations of powerful suites of cards put together. But now the synergies are starting to come good, but looks like a strong curator turn as long as he's willing to leave that Bran up right now. Four cards in hand for Stan. Kazakus already played. Are you that scared of leaving Bran up in this position? Uh, it, it's a tough one because you, you're always afraid of Bran in general, like, like you know, Cabal Courier. 
is uh, still around as well. And we all, you know, I would still be having nightmares if I was Samuel Zhao about that card. It's going to go for the Curator now. It's going to draw an additional like Murloc. And what Murloc is it? Bluegill. So suddenly, you know, Finger's kind of irrelevant yes. at this point as there's only um, one war leader uh, left in the deck. I believe so. You know, you can pretty much do your Murloc combos out of your hand now. But the other cards, Azure Drake and Stranglethorn Tiger, looking pretty good for him so Ooh. far. Look at that hand fill. And I mentioned right early on, the Doom Guard doesn't have to be played on curve most of the time yeah, against Reno. Sure. You just wait. You just empty the rest of your hand and say, okay, well, Doom Guard, I'll discard two, but I don't have cards to discard. It's going to be pretty powerful here. Sam is out going for the Murloc push with the Bluegill trading into the Bran, clearing that off. So there's no chance of any true shenanigan, uh, shenanigans, sorry, shenanigans. happening. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. Yeah. Um, happening and still leaves a reasonable amount of damage on the board now. Yeah, and actually responding to uh, the, the shape of his hand here. Two, two Drakes, Stranglethorn Tiger, Doomguard. This, oh. is a this is a hand that can be played for significant value. And so he chose to keep trading there. Um, pushed into the Bran, not just going for outright face damage, which you would be forgiven for doing in this situation with Stranglethorn Tiger potentially being reliable damage, two charging 4-2 Bluegills and a Doomguard. But Sam Sal thinks he's just comfortable playing the value game against Reno Lock here, which is justified because Stan has been forced to play at a high tempo, committing to the board and not life tapping. So the, the, the aggro-y mid-rangey tempo rogue is actually outvaluing one of the most resilient control decks in the game. Does it make sense? Doesn't make sense. Stranglethorn Tiger getting pulled out from the dirty right. It's absolutely huge. Effectively giving it charge. And somehow, no one's told me this, but stealth dodges the freeze effect as well. <laughs> as we've been able to just punch him in the face for five. Also, that was not true. Don't believe it. It's not the case. Anything on the board can be frozen. That is just a lot of damage represented. No AoE available for Stan at the moment. And also, finally, this Doom Guard just win the game at this point. It's just an extra five. I believe Samuel Zhao before the attack was actually one off lethal anyway uh, the following turn if there was no armor gain, so. Blood so. Sail Corsair to assert dominance and concede is looking like a likely mm. play from uh, Stanadachi in concede. this spot. Oh, breaking up the, the faceless for such terrible value here. It does, in theory, keeping hanging around in this game, but that Doom Guard that's been hanging around since turn one okay. is going to potentially make the Play difference the in this guard, game. Play the Doom Guard, keep the Cold Blood. That's all I'm asking there for. There you go. You got it's your wish, done. Raven. Oh, you got it. Now play the cold blood. <laughs> no, come on. Okay, well, Samuel Zhao does go 3-1 up versus Starudashi, offering him as many losses in this series as he's took in the rest of this tournament. And we've been playing for a fair few days here. Samuel Zhao now on match point against such an experienced player as Stan. What yeah. a great match for him so far. Yeah, huge. And to make the point again, this is the first time now Stan Udachi has faced a game to eliminate himself from the tournament. Sansao now only has his one remaining deck, the Warlock, to win with. Stan Udachi, who's had easy times, not only in general, but with the majority of his decks as well. 3-1 record with Warlock, 3-0 with Shaman, 3-0 with Mage, finally finding himself in dire straits. And now we get to see how effective he is playing from behind. Yeah, and this is just the first match of the day. We have got a couple more after this, and we can check out the players that are going to be coming up next in the second semi-final of this match. Welcome to paradise, the Bahamas. There's more tales to tell. It's Duck Pone. It's Frozen. Doc Pong getting ready, watching the match as well with a lot of interest. He may be facing one of these opponents in the finals. And now Frozen with his parents. Uh, you know, his mum said she's going to get up and watch this match. Now that the pressure of getting to the World Championships nice. is off, she mentioned, you know, Frozen mentioned his, his parents have felt a lot of pressure to watch him play live. Yeah. But now they are here to support him to potentially become the winter champion.
Yeah, so Frozen also said his parents don't really know anything about the game. So the, you guys in the audience, if you're sitting near to Frozen's parents while he's playing, make sure you explain what's going on to them. Oh, so they can. A, it would be a great trick, wouldn't it? <laughs> My portrait exploded. That means I win. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I took the series and just walk off quietly before they notice. They're going to be moving on with this, though. The first semi-final of the day. Samuel Zhao versus Stan Udachi. It's going to be the Warlock from Samuel and the Rogue from Stan. And I believe is uh, Rogue's actually been performing relatively well. Actually, Rogue is the class that Stan Udachi has struggled it's with Samuel the most. Samuel Shao's Rogue that's been performing well. He is Forgive three me. and two with his Rogue compared to the three zeros and three ones with all the other decks that I gave you earlier. You are correct though, Raven, in that Sam Sao has the best record with his Rogue at four and zero. It's not a bad record in general. Okay, Stan getting off to a quick start here with the Swashburgle into the patches. Not drawing patches is definitely a good way to kick off this game, but Stan has to win every single game here to be able to knock uh, Samuel out. This is going to be a tough one, I think. The Crystal Weaver, not the craziest thing to come off Swashburgle I've ever seen. No, it's a, it's a good start for him on this road back, though. Rogue against Reno Lock is a matchup I like from the Rogue sides a lot, and he's got a decent-looking hand for it. The mid-game minions are the first thing that you really want to tick here. Although, you know, Patches turn one is obviously great just to get that little bit of chip damage in. But, you know, you win the most games by going Pillager into Drake, into Big Auctioneer turn, into Crush Your Opponent Out that way. In my opinion, I've seen other people say that you're supposed to play this matchup super aggressive and jam Cold Bloods early and really try and be an aggro deck. But from my experience, that's how I've put together the highest win rate with this deck. And Stranded actually has a great looking curve, does have that Pillager and Drake put together here. Yeah, looking pretty good for him. There is one target in Stan's hand that Sam would be pretty happy Dirty Ratting out. Not that a turn two Dirty Rat is uh, going to help him out too much with the, you know, how heavy his hand is with these, you know, mid-range minions, as you said. But the Van Cleef is definitely a threat as there's pretty much only the Siphon Soul that is a direct answer to that minion alone. Obviously, Twisted Nether later on, but that's another high-value card versus the potential wide rogue board we can see. So Standard actually now decision on Blood Mage or Re-Dagger. And I like the Blood Mage here because just look at his hand. When is he going to find time to re-dagger anyway? When is he going to need to have a dagger? He's not going to. He's just going to play out a power curve of minions. Four into five, the dagger shouldn't be relevant. He can find time to get the dagger back up after then. But now he just wants to get this cycle on the board so that he can keep the pressure coming after Pillager and after Drake by getting some cheap cards to combo with the Van Cleef or by picking up an Auctioneer so that he can start to draw the remainder of his deck. Yeah, and uh, Samus Zara had a bit of a tough choice there. Demon Wrath clears the minions up very easily, but then that hands the, you know, Stan the, the initiative to drop to make a four drop. As you said, you know, the four into five is very dangerous from Rogue all of the time. Samus Zara could have coined out the Twilight Drake to say, well, actually, you know, you, you have three dudes, but they're all one attack for a start. Yeah. And the Twilight Drake will challenge the turn four from his opponent, but they just go for the AOE. Do, do you think that was the uh, correct play moving forward? It's So from Samuel Sal's perspective, he would have been scared of spell damage being left on the board. You always are, especially when you're committing one of your biggest threats, one of your most resilient minions. You don't want too much value coming out of a backstab of this against your Twilight Drake or any of that madness, especially since, yes, there were three little one attack minions on the board. Those are great for picking up just extra fractions yeah. of damage that you need to finish off a minion. So he went for the AOE. It preserved a little bit of his health total as well and it has backfired just a little bit now because the initiative has continued with Stan Udachi. Yep, Twilight Drake coming down as a 4-7 though will survive a just direct trade with the Tomb Pillager but there is now an option to actually double trade in if he really wants. Oh, what what turn can he get away with Conceal here? Van Cleef with the coin right. and having Conceal available does open up some kill options because there is an Eviscerate in hand as well. So, you know, Stan already, you know, taking a, a bit of a minute on this turn. This is a lot slower than we're normally used to in this tournament at least, where Stan's just considering how much damage he can do, what draws he has left, and how he wants to proceed in this game. So Coin of this Edwin Conceal. Coin of this the face, Edwin Conceal, would have put uh, Samsao at 15 
put a 6-6 six, six minion uh, and a 5-4 on the board concealed. So that would have only represented 11, and then there wasn't any more follow-up damage afterwards. So it wasn't a realistic setup for uh, Stranodachi. He's also uh, reticent of the fact that the coin is still in hand for Sam Sal. So, um, you know, potentially Fellfire Potion as well as Reno are things that can shut that down very quickly. It's not like it's a setup that would have beaten the Reno from yeah. Sam Sal. So he just chooses to reconsolidate, follow the strong curve. But as you said, sometimes finding the optimal play with Rogue challenges even the Hearthstone supercomputer that is Shadownodachi. Yeah, Samuel Zao's in a really good turn here, healing the Twilight Drake get, uh, back up, getting much more value out of it over time as opposed to healing his own base, because a four attack minion is just great as it lines up very well versus a lot of the Rogue oh minions themselves. Boy. Shadow Bolt really helping him out clear the board, but oh boy indeed, Gadgetzan's on the board, Conceal's available. Nothing too crazy this turn, but certainly building up for a huge turn next turn, unless Samuel Zao decides to say, look, the damage from my minions is fine this turn to go face and then just hit that Fellfire Potion. Decision time for Samuel Zao. This could be a championship final deciding decision. Fellfire Potion or no Fellfire Potion in this spot. It's so much damage to his own face. It clears his own board, but it does get rid of that Auctioneer in this spot. And this could decide the entire series and this entire championship right here. The, the, there is some other considerations as well. It's not like it's Fellfire or, or Bust at this point. Uh, because he has so much power on board, Dirty Rat wouldn't be a terrible idea. It puts up a taunt in the way for a potential big burst available. He can always fell fire the turn after and have the benefit of the minion still on the board next turn and the uh, minion they could potentially trade into from Dirty Rat. So a lot to consider. With the live tap, Samu Zao's just saying, nope, no fell fire for me. Pulls out the Crystal Weaver, which he can clear off. And here's the problem with this play, you know, when, when you don't clear this Auctioneer, is there even necessarily going to be a next turn for you? You give Stanudachi so many tools, he can make a huge Edwin this turn, he could make a huge Questing this turn, he could just kill you this turn. Those huge minions would be resistant to the Fellfire Potion, and if you're dead, there's no next turn there to play the <laughs> Fellfire Potion in the first place. I think he had to rip it and just hope to restabilize with a Reno follow-up and just re-climb his way back yeah. into the game. But now, Stan is just going off this turn. Yeah, and he has so many draws available to him. He, he can pretty much just say, oh, which cards do I want? I'll keep drawing till I get them. Because uh, that's how this deck is going to work out. Picking up the second coin there means he can continue going up to six mana. There's the sap we were looking for. And it's going to be uh, pretty straightforward from here. Straightforward is not the first description that I have of this turn, Raven. I'm going to be honest. What are you talking about? Edwin no Van Cleef, casual 16-16, rip the conceal. This looks straightforward <laughs> to me. Go <laughs> ahead and fell fire that, Samuel Sal. One turn away from twisting nether and with no coin available means that is just not an option for Samuel Zhao. There is nothing Stan is going <laughs> to lose to. Did the glory live tap for the Reno, but it's not going to be enough. And Stan Udachi actually continues to fight back here, continuing for his life in this match. And we asked the question, how well can Stan perform now under pressure facing elimination? Turns out the answer to that is pretty well. Seemingly so. Yeah. So now for Samuel Sal, pressure now starting to reflect on him. Maybe he will dwell on that decision now. Has that decision to not fell fire potion on that turn cost him a potential spot in the seasonal championship final? Is this now the road back for Stan Udachi? Sam's still in the driver's seat though. Yeah, I mean, I think getting the Crystal Weaver as well out of the Dirty Rat yeah, must have huge. felt really bad. Yeah. What if he pulled the Van Cleef? Suddenly right. everything changes there. And there was Van Cleef, uh, the Crystal Weaver, and one more minute. No, I think it was just those was two. Just those two? The okay, turn, yeah. well, there was a 50-50 shot yeah. there. So, uh, you know, I brought up the Dirty Rat turn. I thought it was a reasonable play. If you get a high-value minion out, you can clear it off. But, uh, you know, I can't tell the future, unfortunately, <laughs> and neither can these players. Stan looking very intense ready for the next game. But um, Samuel Zhao still has uh, two more goes. Yes, and exactly. Basically he has two decks left. He need, uh, sorry, one deck left he needs to win with, and Stanudachi has two, and this one is going to be a Reno Mirror. And this, if it was me, I would be afraid to play Stan in this matchup. 
very, very accomplished Reno Lock player. Kazakus in the opening hand, keeping it alongside the Bran. Samuel Sao has a big threat as well. He does have the Twilight Drake already. So both of these players are going to be off to decent starts here. And as I said, yes. Stanudachi is on the comeback train right now, but Samuel Sal is still very much in the driver's seat. We'll see if he can clinch it out now at the second time of asking. Yeah, this is going to be a uh, great, great matchup to watch. What are the key differences in these deck lists, Sal? You know, uh, I think Samuel Sal is actually bringing just a relatively standard list, uh, but Stan's got a few uh, extra inclusions that might uh, tip a few turns in his favor. He does. He has that uh, Blood Mage Thanos that we talked about. He's also choosing not to run Jaraxxus, instead running Ragnaros in that kind of extra late game threat slot. So one or two little differences. Obviously, there's, there's micro differences in tech cards, as always, between the two decks. Both players are running the Leroy combo as well. And I think the biggest note is that both players are running Dirty Rat, which we have seen in matchups like this be absolutely devastating on both sides of the board here. Sam Sao just going to tempo out the brand. Say, hey, the only way you stop me loading straight up on two Kazaka's potions or the world's biggest Twilight Drake next turn is your one of Shadow Bowl. Stan says, hey, have you met my one of Shadow Bowl? He has now. Bran gone already early on. And that's going to be a tough one because you just have already lost potential high value gain and you know your opponent still has that somewhere in the deck. So, you know, it's something Samuel Zao is going to have to really start thinking about now. Okay, so I don't have the huge brand turns. My opponent could pull off those turns later on. How do I get around this? Do I try and apply more pressure? Right. And try and rush the game out now? Right. Because I'm probably not winning the late game when there's potential double Kazakas potions for my opponent. Yeah, you, you already mentioned the modifier to that, though. He can get a big Dirty Rat, which ruins his, his standard, uh, standard Achi's value plan in the same way. So still hope, and Stan is not going to go down the huge value line with, uh, with Kazakas anytime soon anyway. He's just going to jam a five mana potion here. And he picked that so quickly, I have no idea. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, production team. Polymorph and Summoner 5 5. <laughs> Samuels, I was going to say, well, anything you can do, I can do better. I can play his own Kazakus. And this might actually make him think, OK, well, I, I can just play my Kazakus now. You've played yours one each. A little bit easier. You don't have to try and do anything too crazy with it. He's going for the five mana potion. This is the standard pick almost every time, unless you have a very unique situation. Uh, that allows otherwise, but five mana seems pretty good all the way. Uh, deal five seemed to be the best option at a glance from that one. Yeah, the and only uh, other one I would have suspected he would have picked was summon a five five, and that's just come up again in the second choice. So seems like he took deal five in that spot. Yeah, deal five, summon five. If that is the combination as well, he goes for. Yeah, feels like a five mana violence portal, which is uh, a card I'm okay playing in my deck. Samuel Sao little bit more deliberate in his choice of Kazaka's potion than Stan Udachi was. I, uh, I'm looking at this sheep though. This is very, very powerful in this match, but I wouldn't be surprised if he did take it generally. He does go for the polymorph. Okay. Yeah, I don't mind this at all. There, there can be some, some big dudes that drop out onto the board and being able to just answer your opponents very quickly, combined with potentially killing two minions here. Just rips it, not even hitting a high value threat with the uh, the Polymorph. Just wants to push tempo here, get that 5-5 onto the board. And Sam Sao now has to find a way to deal with this. But his Kazaka's Potion is now not the perfect answer. His Kazaka's Potion is for more dramatic positions than this. Yeah, I mean, he could just uh, he could just trade and just slam Emperor. Uh, that looks nice, point. yeah. Uh, this just looks clean. He doesn't uh, hit a combo piece, though, which is the one uh, drawback of that. <laughs> Confidence. But yeah, I mean, we have seen actually just a lot of games not be finished by the oh, atypical I, I combo. Yeah, I'm not ruling um, it out. I'm yeah. just saying that is a yeah, downside yeah, of, of the play. Uh, you know, generally you do want to hit one piece. You can fit it into a 10 mana turn. But so many of the, the Reno mirrors specifically aren't played out like that. You see, we've seen just this week, uh, just this past week, a lot of faceless manipulators be used on other yeah. minions. Like yeah. just a hell of a lot. And normally that gets you far enough ahead that you don't need the combo later on. But Samuel Zao disagrees. Not the best options. Corruption can find some value in this matchup. Corruption is a card that's found its way cheekily into a couple of uh, Reno decks recently. 
Um, thinking of Hoy primarily was the player who took that yeah. to rank one legend, I believe. And uh, now he's just choosing to disrespect the 5-5 now and push damage. Shadow Flame opportunity for Stana Dutchie. Not a huge value one, though. So I mean, reasonable he, he, play from Samuel Sao just to push the damage in that spot. I mean, that was, again, like, Stana's just not even letting us cast this game at this point. He's just saying, don't look at my cards. Don't think of any plays. There was an opportunity to actually go dirty rat Shadow Flame, mm -hmm. which, you know, can always have the chance of pulling a high value target out. And with the five attack on the demon, the Shadow Flame actually kills most things. Yeah, you could have hit uh, Reno, Enforcer, Mountain Giant, for example, just off the top of my head. But if you're hitting Reno, probably yeah, a win, probably okay probably with a that win for you anyway. Yeah. But I mean, this play was so strong. The fact, you know, when we talk about Kazaka's potions, we always say I'll summon a 5-5. Five -five. The 5-5 five -five Demon part of that is actually relevant when it comes down to Reno Lock, because Demon Wrath can create opportunities like this. So yep. Stanodachi spotted that clear lightning fast. He knows the interactions and, oh, made, and manages to dominate the board immediately. And now Samurai Zhao is going to use his own potion, clear up the demon, polymorph the 1 1. Uh, po polymorph the Farseer into a 1 1, sorry. And uh, just a slow turn. It feels like uh, Shtan is really dictating the pace of this game. It's more like, you know, I'll do something, then you try and respond and develop the board yourself. I'll do something else, clear the board, you respond again. And Samuel Zhao's kind of been pushed slowly onto the back foot here. I think, to the contrary, um, Samuel Zhao is not letting Shtano Dachi dictate the pace of this game. And I think that's why he's been successful so far. He hasn't been dragged into oh, speeding hang on. up. There's one. Okay, Reno is safe for now, Emperor out. And there's no way Stein can deal with Emperor this turn. That has not gone well. So Shtano Dachi, from his position, his hand ran dry. I wanted to comment on that. He didn't really have more big threats to play. Life Tap didn't have great odds of hitting him something proactive to do. So he just kind of felt like he needed a gambit. He needed to act this turn. He didn't want to cede the full turn back to Samuel Sal. So he just went for pulling big value cards out of the hand, but it backfired spectacularly with the Emperor hitting the board. Yeah, this is absolutely huge. Saving Samuel Zhao, just six mana this turn. You can get huge value on the end of it with this Emperor and can potentially even think about, because of the way his hand is shaping up, just using Blast Crystal here to clear off some of these minions is he's moving towards 10 mana. And that's the point where Blast Crystal, the drawback of losing Crystal, doesn't mean that much when you're already nearly at full. If, you wanna be, if you're a Stan fan here, though, and you want to be the Eternal Optimist, still no combo piece in hand for Samuel Zhao. That's true. So the 20 burst damage is is still not within Samuel Sal's capabilities just yet, but that is really digging deep to find an upside of this situation. Yeah, unless you count, you know, Hellfire is a combo yeah. piece. If, if that Emperor hangs around too long, he'll be able to deal 20 damage burst with just combinations of Fellfire, Soulfire, Hellfire, whatever else he draws. Fire, fire, fire. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's actually just nine from hand at this point anyway. Definitely something to uh, keep in mind as we start to look at the points of this game going where health is actually going to be super important. And Stan might be in a bit of a, a pickle here. A pickle. What? Oh, you do sound very British sometimes. Raven. Says you! <laughs> oh my, you have the atypical British accent. I don't. Okay. Is it, is it Reno time? That's the question. Uh, I guess n now with that tap, it certainly feels like it. Nope. Oh, okay. Siphon Soul, he's saying that this, the damage from the second tick of Emperor is actually significant, as well as the 5 5 on the board. Often there's a mentality from players to say that damage is done after the first Reno tick. The second one doesn't often have as big of an impact, but Stan there just choosing to try and exhaust the board a little bit more before he drops his Reno, oh trying to gain as much value out of this card Tempo as Tempo Reno. This is so funny to me because Samu Zhao's like ahead in the game. He just can't draw anything to get him more ahead. He's just drawing all the answers. He's like, no, but I'm winning. This is not what I want. He's going to Doomsayer here to prevent any big tempo turn coming out from Stan Adachi and just going to trust his deck to hit him something to do on the following turn. These turns are just getting stranger and stranger periodically as time goes on. Yep. I, I don't, it's, it's so strange to see someone so far ahead and only answers in hand. Mm -hmm. Even the Mistress of Mixtures isn't what he wants to see. It's a minion, but it's going to heal Stan back up which means he's further out of range of the burst. But there's the Reno from Stan. He is not risking anything here as the tournament life is on the line in this game. Yeah, tapped himself down to the point where uh, just 
Leroy Faceless or just Leroy Power Overwhelming Soulfire would um, take him down. So there became too many combinations of cards that would get the job done at that point. Yeah, now Samuel Zhao getting rewarded for this Doomsayer play because he did manage to draw into the Giant, which is the biggest threat he could have drawn along with being able to get the Imp Gang Boss out as well. So now it's all on Stan trying to defend this. He does, though, have the chance to Faceless Manipulate the Giant and either Shadow Flame or follow up with the second Faceless mm -hmm. to create two 8-8s on the board. Then you kind of get into old school Molten Giant situations. Like the Faceless Faceless play gets you into the position where then your opponent's Shadow Flame has too much value yeah. because you've loaded up multiple 8-8 against their one. So the clear looks a bit more promising here to me, but Stan disagrees. He sees his own lines once again. He's just going to develop stats to the board and try and fight for this game yet again, piece by piece. Yeah, I think he might be saying, well, you know, OK, I've got good minions to play elsewhere here. I can play them out, see what happens next turn. And if my opponent overcommits, the giant almost certainly lives here. So he can then do the turn next turn if he really needs to and do That's a fair. big AOE clear if yep. there's anything else that comes out. Two four tens is fine by me. This dodges that kind of situation I was talking about before because they're out of range. The giant could attack into one of them once, but then the uh, four ten that survives would eat up another minion as well. So it's not a particularly strong shadow flame board for the opponent. Yeah, I always like to see a uh, faceless shambler come down when the health is that high. It's kind of crazy. I wonder. Samuel Zhao now. Still not got any great options, a lot of answers. Definitely doesn't want to just twist in this board because just having the Mountain Giant is such a huge guy on the board to start pushing that damage down again because he's still holding on to the Fellfire and the Soulfire kind of burst combo, which sounds like something no one's probably ever said whilst casting a game of Hearthstone before, but is available to him for that extra kind of burst damage that Stan probably just isn't, hasn't got the top of his mind, at least as we've still not seen any combo pieces out of Samuel Zhao yet. Samuel now deciding whether he wants to trade or go face. He can represent the threat, the threat of lethal, even without having those combo pieces in his hand by being aggressive. Make Stan Adachi panic, make him respect that Leroy combo, even though it's not in hand. But he chooses just to continue oh. to dominate the board, and he's healed Stanudachi unnecessarily Ooh. in this spot due to the poor sequencing. Yeah, the insta, he, he clicked, that was a mistake before the minion even hit the board. Knew he messed up as soon as he made the play. And uh, that's just little chunks of health that might make the difference. Stan has a great clear here with that Shadow Flame, following up with the Doomsday now, but this is so risky. There's Leroy as well, so this is tough. Can, can Samuel Zhao take this turn to play Jaraxxus? Extremely risky in the matchup, of course, yeah. because of the high damage combo. That is priority number one. But there is no Emperor yet. Exactly. Which means you maximum ma damage output is 14, because Stanidachi does play a copy of Soulfire in his deck, which I don't believe we've seen yet. So Leroy, so, uh, Leroy Power Overwhelming Soulfire can come out together without the Emperor discount, or Leroy Faceless can come out without the discount for 12. Yeah, and if the Drax has come down, uh, comes down now, then the, look at the tools. These answers that Samuel Zhao has had in hand for so long kind of work out. If some burst damage or heavy damage comes out from Stan onto the Draxus, then he can just play Reno. He can Fellfire Reno to clear a board and then go back up to full anyway. Or he can just Twisting Nether, whatever it gets played, and press Hero Power and create a 6-6. Six, six. Like, I... I think that might have been a turn to sneak a Jaraxxus there. I'm actually not so sure. The one thing that holds me back from wanting to make that play, which is definitely risky, you don't have any way to taunt in your hand right now. So you, in theory, have to try and defend 15 for the rest of the game. That's difficult. You can defend 15 for like one turn when you know your opponent can't sure, burst you because sure. they haven't played Emperor yet. At some point, they're going to threaten more damage than that, and you're going to have to have big taunts in play to prevent it coming through. I'm just feeling a lack of confidence from you, Sol, to be honest, but Stein is going to be feeling a lot more confident now. Emperor does finally get drawn and hits every single piece yep. he wants to. He can now, for eight mana, deal 20 straight from hand. Which means and lethal is set up yeah, right now. I was going to say, which means... Well, that's just a lot of damage. And now Samuel Zhao, after seeing the Emperor, this changes everything at this point. 
Bellflower Potion would clear, and he'd only take five damage himself instead of the seven that he's left up, which would get him out of range of the standard 20 that you come to expect. And second rate Bruiser being picked up has options as well, but well, he, he also can do both. has to think, you know, Stan so far through his deck right now, only seven cards remaining, maybe, from Samuel Sal's perspective, a lot of dead cards have been in Stan's hand the entire game. Maybe he gives him credit from having the Soul Fire in hand as well and wants to play around both. And that looks like exactly yeah. what this, this play is This here. just seems like the overall strongest turn right. here. You are ultra safe. Oh, you clear oh, up oh, the threats. Oh. There is a Soul Fire that can be guaranteed cast because you can stack up the combo before you have to play it. Uh, so the discard won't matter at the end of the day when you consider the combo. So 24 damage from hand now. It's just a second rate bruiser in the way. And let's not lose sight of the fact that Sam Sao is threatening 14 back the other way, plus his 4-5 on board. So Stanadachi has to think defensively here as well as offensively oh. himself. Rack can come down here if he was feeling brave. But no, like I said, he is scared of the defensive options, of the offensive options of his opponent and just chooses to react. Yeah, well What's crazy as well is he could just die at this health anyway to the, with the, with, yep. to the 20. So, you know, Stan put himself in a vulnerable position to try and clear through this taunt. Now he knows he's got access to so much additional damage. But even this mistress now is going to heal, you know, just as much as it pushes Stan out of range. It also pushes Samuel further out of range. So just this constant back and forth now that you get to in this stage of this matchup where both players are just very tentatively playing with the health totals to try and not fall into a vulnerable position and just instantly lose the game at that point. And forcing now the pickup from Samuel Sao. No super stellar options in hand, but we're also reaching the point in Arena Lock Mirror where you have to think twice about every tap you make because it's now looking like both players might see the very ends of their decks, which means that tapping too much can cause you to lose games to fatigue. That one extra tick pushes you over, pushes yep. you below 20, pushes you below 24. That can just end the game on the spot. And we're just going to see the health totals get played around with now as the Abyssal deals three, but the Mistress will heal for four. If Samuel Zhao commits to it, it looks like he is and that's gonna be it so he so now that it gets so tricky because Stan is on 25 but the abyssal is still alive so it can get hit off for six and it starts to add up to so much additional damage it's lethal that's yes <laughs> okay 24 plus I believe three you. 24 plus three is 27 where i come from sam sal couldn't find a way to beat the full combo with the bonus cherry on top of that soul fire stan Udachi has showing that he is just as accomplished at coming from behind as he is at leading from the front it's now back at three games to three stan's hopes are still alive europe's hopes are still alive Pressure now back well and truly on Sam Sal, but he is the king of the 4-3 in this tournament. Shouldn't even be a surprise to anyone at this point that nope. we're going to a game seven when Samuel Sal is one of the players and the final matchup is going to be the Warlock versus the Shaman. Yeah, I actually tweeted coming into this series that this was going to be 10 minutes long because Stan was playing, completely forgetting that his <laughs> opponent was Sam Sal. No idea what I was thinking. Guaranteed to go all the way to seven games. Yeah, it's absolutely huge. And it's so important as well for both these players to be focused. And that's Stan's manager there <laughs> saying, you are not allowed to lose this series. You cannot give up and you continue to fight back in this match. And he's been doing a fantastic job so far. But Samuel Zhao just being able to pull ahead early on proves he's not messing around either. And it's all going to come down to this last game. How is this matchup going to play out? Agro Shaman is the deck that's left for Stan Udachi. Sam Sao is back onto this Reno, and Agro Shaman has lost a lot of its early game explosive potential with that pirate package now being not as robust as it used to be. But Hammer of Twilight is a great mid game package to just force a bunch of damage through. He's going to be looking for a much more aggressive opening than what we see here. Sam Sal looking to mulligan away the dead cards as well. Mountain Giant and Jaraxxus, two of the weakest cards in this matchup. Mountain Giant borderline unplayable against an aggro deck. And Stan Udachi got his wish. The Trogs have come out to play. Yeah, but on the other hand, Samuel Zal's mulligan has treated him pretty kindly as well. Shadow Bolt, very flexible tool, just dealing with a lot of the minions that are going to come out early. The Demon Wrath going to help clear up all the early threats as well, and even the Imp Gang Boss to go on top. 
Yeah, and there's a good reason why you often lead with South Sea Deckhand in these kinds of matchups. These are the only one mana play going first that lets you beat Doomsayer. He wouldn't beat it with the hand right now, but it means you can draw Flame Tongue Totem, and then that's then seven total damage. Not possible to do any other way when you're going first. I lied. Yeah. Double Lightning Bolt and a Trog. Liar. <laughs> I feel like you've lied to me at least once on cast every single day, so also, uh, note to everyone watching. At least I'm honest a word about my lies. It's just blown my mind. I don't know how to deal with that statement. Okay, so what if you're lying about that, though? Oh, no. Im Gang Boss or Second Rate Bruiser is the decision that we have to make. Demon Wrath has a tiny bit of merit, but not very much. No, I, like, I like the Im Gang Boss. I think um, it, it has potential of getting the extra tokens, which will then help trade into some more minions that might make your Demon Wrath be stronger going forward. Sam Rosado, just going for the uh, Bruiser, just doesn't want to take any face damage at all. I was okay. about to make a noise, and then the crowd made the exact noise <laughs> I was about to. Oh. I just thought, all right, I'll, let, I'll just let it hang. Yeah, that that is a sharp intake of breath draw right there. Tunnel Trogs now pushing in, consolidating a board, no Hellfire in hand. The Demon Wrath is not effective, no Reno as of yet, and the one big defensive play of the second rate Bruiser already expended from Samuel Sal. Gobbled up with ease by those minions. Shadowbolt gonna come down to clear up the Tunnel Trog as that is priority number one as that can grow to ludicrous amounts of damage. And Stan now getting off to a pretty quick start with the minion base and starting to draw into Jade Lightning, Lava Burst. So much damage represented. Samuel doesn't really have any great defensive options as he draws into a Doomsayer, of course, but this Doomsayer is definitely not a sure thing. And if he chooses to play it, that's all he can do this turn. Yeah. It may be needed just to try and heal. The difference of having seven damage sent into this Doomsayer might be the difference between dying on going into his turn five or into his turn six when he has the chance to still draw Reno Jackson and defend. So I think the Doomsayer might just be a necessary evil in this spot. Definitely a tough call. This is extremely tense. The last game of this series. The winner is moving on to the finals of the Winter Championships. The loser still off to a, you know, a, a great finish overall, but everyone is playing for this first place. Jade Claws, not a bad draw Whoa, either. whoa, whoa, Stan, time, think about this. Two, four, five damage on board. Jade Lightning to the face would represent 10 damage. You can then follow that up with Lava Burst and Jade Claws on the turn before your opponent can play Reno Jackson. Was there an opportunity just to push the face there and let the Reno go, let the Doomsayer go off? This is a fine position, don't get me wrong, but if Hellfire were to come down here, which you know your opponent doesn't have from last turn, more yes. than likely, yes. but is a possible top deck, suddenly you're not representing nine damage from hand on the following turn. It felt like going face was an almost guaranteed lethal setup. Yeah, and, and you know, again, we, we, we've talked a lot about how Stan has, has been playing so solid and so quickly, but this, you know, this is the very high pressure game here. There might be just a little crack starting to show, but this is not leaving him in a bad position at all still. There needs to be perfect answers from Samuel Zhao every single turn, and he simply doesn't have them. Is he, is he gonna faceless a feral spirit? So he would have done exactly seven more damage to face, right? Leaving Samuel Zhao at five, which means if Farseer or Refreshment Vendor comes out, it's pushing him back up to eight. So note this way, I believe, does actually play around more cards. I take it all back, this actually looks correct. You lied again, Sol. That's twice in one match. Again, honest about my lies. Oh, are you? Okay, so there's a Demon Wrath coming down. Whoa! <laughs> okay. That was indeed a lie. I didn't I, know how to follow that it's up. It's crazy. That, that life tap threw me off. I'm not going to lie to anyone. <laughs> Stan Udachi, that life tap did give him the win this turn, but Sam Sal, fully justified. Had to look for that Reno for the next turn. Doubled his chances of getting there. Stanudachi has now made his point. He doesn't just have to run away with a series. He can fight from behind as well. I'm sure his manager's happy in the audience. I'm sure Samuel Sao is happy overall with his performance. But the happiest man in the room right now, Stanudachi himself. I promise you, even if he doesn't look like it. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be moving on to the finals. There's going to be a European representative there. Woo! Samuel Zhao doing the Asia Pacific region a huge service getting this far but it wasn't enough to beat Stan. The next match we've got coming up is of course going to be Frozen versus Doc 
Pon. Can't wait for that one. Yeah, no disrespect to Doc Pon whatsoever, but for me, Stanudachi versus Frozen would be a dream final on so many levels. That's still a very real possibility. Yeah, but let's uh, check out with the first finalist to go into the Winter Championships with Rachel. It's Stan. Thank you guys so much. Stan, what is it like to fight from behind for once? Uh, this match was very difficult. Началось все 0-2, и, казалось бы, уже там плохие матчапы под конец получились, но все сложилось, к счастью, очень и очень неплохо впоследствии. Yes, this was a diff very difficult match for me. Uh, I was behind 0-2, and the remaining matchups were very hard for me, but uh, luckily I managed to pull it off, and I'm very glad. Absolutely. Talk to me a little bit about what you were feeling going up against an opponent like Samuel Sao in this super high-pressure match to get to the finals. Но на самом деле это уже не такой э, нервирующий матч, потому что самый важный матч уже позади, на близко я уже попал, и тут каких-то нервов не было. Проблема в том, что я приболел, и сегодня я с температурой играл, и как-то не очень хорошо себя чувствовал. А по факту э, у Самуэля это были такие же колоды, как и у первого оппонента. Uh... I was feeling much less nervous today because the most important match for me was yesterday to qualify for BlizzCon. Uh, but today uh, I had a fever this morning, so I was not playing at my top. Uh, yeah, but uh, the decks that I was facing today with Samuel were basically the same as yesterday. Well, I'm glad you were able to recover. A fever is no, uh, no light matter. But you have an incredible team here, including your managers here who support you. Can you tell me a little bit about what your organi uh, organization does to make it possible for you to play so well? Очень хотел бы поблагодарить как раз таки мою организацию, которую вы говорите, которая мне помогла сюда различными методами добраться. Также хотел поблагодарить и моего знакомого друга, который мне помогал готовиться, Ник Армагеддон у него, и всех, кто меня поддерживал. Yes, I'm very grateful uh, to the team that supports me. I would like to thank them. And I would like to thank my uh, good friend uh, Armageddon, right? Who uh, helped me prepare for this matches. Well, you have one last match coming up that's going to be against either Doc Pone or Frozen. Now, both of these players are incredible, but who would you rather face off against? And do you have a message for them? I'm ready to fight against both opponents, but... Frozen волновался, если он снова будет волноваться, то я готов с ним играть снова, <laughs> как в прошлый раз. Uh, так готов с собой сражаться. I am ready to face either of them, uh, but Frozen was a little more nervous in the previous matches. If he, if he continues to be nervous, I'm ready to play him. Uh oh, watch out, Frozen! He's coming for you. We shall see who his opponent will be next. But for now, let's go back to the casters. Congratulations. Yeah, but I would definitely be nervous if I was going up against Stan. But Frozen, no pushover either, and.